In early June, Apple announced their next version of macOS, macOS Sequoia, and at the time of writing this, I've been using the beta since its announcement in early June. So, how has it been? In this video, I'll go over my thoughts on the features, the bugs, other stuff, and if it's worth updating and using the public beta, which released a few days ago. But first, I'll explain what kind of machine I'm running this beta on. I'm running this beta on my M3 Pro MacBook Pro. I have made a video on it previously if you want full details about it, but I'll go over the basics here. It's the 14 inch model with the base M3 Pro chip. It has 5 performance cores, 6 efficiency cores, and 18 gigabytes of RAM. Even though it's just the base model, it's a real powerhouse, and at the time of writing this, is the newest MacBook Pro Apple sells. If anything is going to handle the beta well, it's going to be a MacBook Pro like this one. Getting back to the beta, how is it with daily use? Just moving around the OS as they would every day feels just the same as it did on the previous version. I haven't noticed any lag or slowdowns and the computer doesn't appear to struggle with anything. Apps still open quickly and for the most part remain responsive. I say most, as I have noticed an issue here or there which I'll talk more about later. But anyways, the apps I use the most are Notes, Safari and Premiere Pro all of which seem the same to me performance wise. Of course, everybody's use case is different and this will vary, but for the most part, everyone is agreeing the OS is surprisingly stable. The battery life hasn't changed noticeably, still lasting me the day with ease. So overall, I would say at face value, the beta software is fairly stable and reliable. It's not power hungry, so I'd say for those with older Macs, the battery life difference shouldn't be of concern. Macs are usually pretty good for software support and stability on older machines, and I don't believe this is any different. Now, what does this relatively stable beta bring in terms of features? Well, macOS Sequoia brings with it a plethora of new features, a lot of which seem to have been welcomed. To highlight of some main ones, there's iPhone mirroring, the ability to use your phone on your Mac, productivity, the ability to snap apps to the corner or side, which has been a useful feature on Windows for a long time, there's also highlights on Safari, which removes some distractions from busy websites, a new passwords app, new AirPods controls, new maps, collapsible notes, changes to gaming on Mac, new iMessage features, and more. My favourite three would have to be iPhone mirroring, window snapping, and collapsible notes. iPhone mirroring has been surprisingly useful. I've found it makes it easy to transfer files, as there's no need to go grab your phone to airdrop or email, as long as it's close enough to connect. Window snapping is neat. It isn't as quick for full screen snapping as the way it works by snapping it to a side or corner with the screen has the dock visible, but it's useful nonetheless. I haven't come across many scenarios where I use it, but there's been a few times where it would have been, or has been useful to quickly snap windows like this. Collapsible Notes is an interesting one. It seems quite useful, and I'll admit it has been. What it does is put all the text underneath the heading in a notes document, which helps to keep your notes looking tidy when it works. It was a little confusing at first, as you have to label a word or sentence as a heading or subheading, then it automatically becomes collapsible. And I've had some sentences just disappear before, but that was on the first beta, and I believe it's been fixed now, or at least been much more stable as updates have rolled out. Of course, with these updates, there's going to be bugs, both bugs being fixed and bugs being discovered. I've noticed a few here and there, I mentioned sentences disappearing in nodes, but there's been a couple other less serious ones. For starters, the Duolingo app freezes up during lessons or startup. I don't know whether the beta is to blame, but it started happening after installing the second developer beta, and has continued with the third. It's no big deal, and it's only on specific lessons, but still odd. I've also noticed that my Mac was having a hard time connecting to my phone's hotspot. It wouldn't connect to it no matter if it was plugged in Bluetooth or anything, but since the new beta, this seems to have stopped. I've also noticed screensavers and wallpapers appear to be bugged. My wallpaper is an album that rotates a photo every 5 minutes, but at the time of writing this, it's remained on the one photo for a few days. And for the screensaver, I've been using the new macOS Sequoia one, and I've noticed it often will remain still instead of slowly moving as it's supposed to. These are minor things, and the screensaver issues appear to be normal on betas, and are fixed quite quickly. So overall, in terms of bugs, macOS Sequoia had its fair share, but plenty of them have already been fixed. It's kind of the point of the beta, to gather feedback and bug reports from the QMD so the end result is more stable. With that said, is the beta worth using? Is it worth using? Well, no, not for the everyday person. Of course, when macOS Sequoia is out of beta and fully released, then yes, it's 100% worth updating to. 
but for the beta, unless you can't wait to use the new features or for someone who likes to test out beta softwares like these, then it's worth waiting for the full release. The main reason I would say this is that for whatever reason the beta doesn't work properly, the only way to go back to the previous version is to do a fresh shop or install on your Mac, which removes any files stored directly on it. It's quite strongly recommended you back up your Mac before updating. The chance of this happening is low, but even if all is fine, installing betas can be a hassle, and it'll only be a few months before it's before release is out. So, at the end of the day, this new version of software appears to bring some great features, and for those who've been wanting to test it out, the risk is low. For many people, the best option is to wait for the full release, but for those who like testing out new features like this, the beta is proving pretty stable. Anyway, that's about it for now. Hopefully the gap between the next video won't be quite as long, so hopefully I'll see you again soon. See ya.